Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and glory and praise goes to Yahweh in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, this video is for those who somehow still believe that the law, statutes, and commandments were done away with, that HaMashiach himself came to destroy the laws at his death and at his resurrection bring forth a self-righteous self-centered way of living your life according to what you believe is righteousness in your own mind and heart heart's desire well i tell you right now that's the christian way and this is the reason why most of the christians are indeed living on their own self-righteousness, their own thoughts of what they believe and how to apply the scripts according to their thoughts, their emotions, and their experiences and teachings in life. When this is not the way we were taught by Hamashiach, we were taught to walk in the ways of our fathers, walk in the ways of what the Most High has given the 12 tribes to walk in. Right here at Matthew chapter 5, we read Hamashiach going over the very end results of following the law, section, and commandments. For those who got an ear to hear and eyes to see, this is the end results of walking in all the law. Against such, there is no law. Now, if you read Exodus through Deuteronomy, then you come back and read all this, you would see that you need to do this yourself. You need to see this. It ain't just me showing you here, but hearing does come by. I mean, faith does come by hearing. So, but go and read it. And, uh, read the law, statutes, commandments that the Most High gave to the 12 tribes and get an understanding of what Hamashiach is talking here. Let's read it. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yahuwah. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Yahweh. Blessed are, <clears throat> are, are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now why did they persecute the prophets? Because the prophets were preaching, come back to the law, statutes, and commandments by faith. Come back to the testimonies of the Most High and believe. Walk in them, do them. For the law, statutes, and commandments is our righteousness. It teaches us. Now, Before, we had a schoolmaster, but now we have Hamashiach, and we are to hear ye his son, hear ye my son, hear Hamashiach speaking here. He's speaking on the law of such commandments right now, and he says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? 
It is therefore good for nothing but to cast down and to be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now remember, he was talking to Yehuda, the, the uh, Judeans. He's not talking to everybody right here. He's talking to Yehuda. He's directly addressing the, the children of Yasharal. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now, mind you, there were other nations um, there as well. And they could have been listening as well. Because we can't forget that that the uh, individuals out of other nations can't partake in the crumbs that fall from the master's table. As in the parable of um, the woman came to Hamashiach and he called her a dog pretty much. And According to her faith, according to your faith, Gentiles, you can be grafted in. All right, let's move on. Neither do men light a candlestick and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Now, we are supposed to be letting our light shine before men, Zion, 12 tribes of Yashara. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's your duty. You know, the other nations were given to you, Zion. You are to show them. You are to be a light to them as Hamashiach was a light to us. Y'all see this divine order? And it's never going to change. No matter how much the Gentiles wanted to change. It, you can't change the book. You can't change the word of the Most High. He never changes. And he's not going to change it because of your heart. is filled with envy or uh, hatred. Our jealousy it's not going to change you have to understand your position and your place that he has put you in just as he chose us and put us in a place but not as though the word of the most high has not taken any effect and what that means is there there is a remnant of Yashara that shall be saved and be brought back into their land and redeemed and restored to the kings and priests of, of the earth that they were supposed to be. And there are other nations of people who will bow out to the Most High's will and serve the kingdom as the Most High has designed them to and designated them to serve his kingdom. Verse 18. Oh, verse 17. That think not that I am come to destroy the law, all the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Did he come to fulfill it for you? Or did he come to show you how to fulfill it? See, in the world of Christianity, they tell you that this means he fulfilled it for you, so you don't have to do none of the laws. How crazy does that sound now? And then, if they'd have just read the next two verses, they would have found out that the devil was a lie. 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Oops. That was 17. 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Can you say it with me? Till all be fulfilled. Field. Somehow people don't get this. None of this is going to pass away till what? 
Now I took the class. What a little bouncing dot. Till all be fulfilled. <laughs> Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Of heaven. But whoso shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You know, I, I'm looking at this part right here because I want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. If you want to tell people not to follow the laws, um, some of them, you know, here and there, you're going to be least in the kingdom. And we, we do have some Hebrews who are omitting some laws because they don't have an understanding that your body is the spirit. Your body is the temple of the Most High. And that those laws which were that you really can't do physically in the temple right now because you don't have a physical temple built that you can go inside and the Levites can be the priest and do these jobs. Well, your body now becomes the holy temple. And those things which the Levite priest was a foreshadow of your you doing them inside of you and letting those fruits come out, your hands and your feet and your mouth and your actions and character and multiple other things. Y'all get what I'm saying? This is what Paul was saying. Be a doer of the word so that you can be great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So even the scribes and the Pharisees did what? They kept the law, statutes, and commandments. But they had a whole lot of other laws that they added. <laughs> and the Most High is telling you, unless your righteousness is seed theirs, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. What do you mean by that? That means you you got to have faith and do all these things through by faith and produce the works of the Spirit and the, and the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. You know, the Most High always desired to enter us into us. And, you know, the, our bodies was originally His holy temple. This is where He desires to dwell inside of us and work through us. And that's how your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, when you get understanding that your body is the holy temple now, and that all these great examples in the past that the Most High left for us, kind of like breadcrumbs, <laughs> you follow the breadcrumb trails to reach the treasure, and that's what some of you have done on my channel. You follow the little breadcrumb trails until you, you finally reach the final treasure. Some of you understood this already, but you didn't have a deeper meaning of what it meant in the past, the Levites uh, taking care of the Holy Temple and their bodies and how they had to wash them and do all these things in the temple is the same thing you have to do in spirit now that your body is the Holy Temple. You have to do these things on the inside and let the Holy Spirit teach you and guide you on how to do these things on the inside, how to properly wash yourself clean of the things that you're seeing and hearing and how to apply these laws, such commandments spiritually into your lives that you may show forth that you are in Hamashiach. It's not just um, dressing up and acting the part. It's not just doing the feast days, saying, hey, I'm doing the feast days. Hey, I'm, I'm, I come to every Sabbath day and I worship the Most High on every Sabbath. It's not just those things. You have to have these fruits of the Spirit pouring out of you as well. Goodness, kindness, giving good alms, and reaching out to people. And whatever gift the Most High gives you, use it 
to the best of your ability and help the lost, help, help the 12 tribes understand who they are, help them wake up, help them come into the spiritual man and the spiritual woman, just as we are to help the Gentiles come into the spiritual man and the spiritual woman and get them a full, full understanding of how to serve the Most High in the Spirit. Your body is the third temple that Hamashiach came to build. You waiting on this third temple? I don't know why. Why are you waiting on the? Why are you waiting on these heathens to build a third temple? The Most High never had heathens build the third temple. I mean, any of our temples. We built the first tabernacle with our hands, Zion, the twelve tribes. That was the tent that the Most High dwelt in first. That's number one. Number two, we built the first temple, Solomon's temple. We built it. We had us. We had them assist us building it, but we built it. And number three, we built the second temple with our hands. And guess what? A lot of y'all don't even know that we're gonna build the third temple with our hands because you're still a part of this Christian doctrine. You're still waiting on them to build the temple. The Most High has never used nobody else to build his temple but us. And to tell you, when Hamashiach returned, we're going to rebuild the temple. We. But we're going to have our servants and handmaids with us to assist us like before. Now, doesn't that line up more with the Holy Scriptures rather than y'all sitting there waiting on some satanic doctrine? On, on the heathens building our third temple. Well, the physical third temple is going to be for the um, purging out of the Gentiles after we are reestablished in our land. But the third temple, no, no, but the uh, rebuilding of the temple of our bodies happened when Hamashiach became that cornerstone within you when you accepted him and it, you know him dying on the tree spilling his blood spilling that water out as a foreshadow I mean as a washing away in the purging out of you by the water of the word and as his blood being a covering that the death angel may pass over you. I hope y'all getting this understanding. I know sometimes I'm not the elegant, you know, the most elegant speaker, but I do try my best to get it, give y'all understanding as best I can on what's happening, what happened when Hamashek died and all the way up to this point. It's basically by walking in righteousness and holiness. And fulfilling the two great commandments. It shows that the Most High, that you are in Hamashiach, the cornerstone. And because Hamashiach is in the Most High, you are in the Most High too. Now you are all one with him. And your spiritual body and spiritual man is one with the Most High. Now you must treat your body like a holy temple. And we got to watch what we put in it. And I'm on that right now. I'm learning that. I got some good stuff that I'm fist to do. And the cleanse and purge out my temple as well. So it's not like uh, the word has taken effect over here. I'm a work in progress like everybody else. So some areas I'm really, really good at. I can get real fast and easy. Some areas not so good at and so fast and so easy. And reversing my health and everything is a slow, uh, slow right now because of the way I lived all my life. You know, and I, I, I have put put away a lot of um, defiling things out of my life and it's just discovering 
new defiling things that I didn't understand before and I haven't taken out yet and I'm doing that as well and I'm finding replacements for the foods that I'm eating and, and um, a whole lot of different things that I'm doing different and they will come into effect when when the time has come so I'm being patient about that so y'all pray for me on that as well but I hope you understand that these laws such commandments you have to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. So let's read a little bit more. You have heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not kill. Now this is a, a, an example of your exceeding the righteousness of the Pharisees. Because he's given one of the great commandments, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, he expounds on that. He, he exceeds the righteousness of them. Pharisees, here it is. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. This is when you say it in a real hateful, I can't stand you, brother, I want to kill you to the you in danger of that hellfire. So Hamashiach gave us a better understanding spiritually, not just physically killing someone, but he went spiritually on, on this. Y'all get it? The body is spirit temple now. See, it's not just the physical things that they did in the past. It's not just the letter of the law. It's it's a spiritual inner thing that. that has to, that you have to get on the inside from Hamashiach, from Yahuwah. See, without his spirit, how, sh how can you be saved? You have to have the spirit. How are you going to be covered? How are your sins going to be covered? We got a lot of people walking around don't even understand what happened after Hamashiach died. They didn't understand the spiritual temple that he was building from three days from his death, you know, after his resurrection. He said in three days, I will raise this temple up. They don't understand the spiritual temple that's being built. And guess what? Your enemy is building a spiritual temple too. And he has plans to be inside of you. And that's what the new Mark of the Beast is going to do. For some of you who made it this far, because a lot of people are tuned out by now. A lot of people don't take it this far, but you're getting this extra knowledge and information. For those who always make it to the end, I always add a little extra. <laughs> because the ones who drop off in the beginning, they're not here for, they, they're, not, they're not thirsting for righteousness. They're not thirsting for hunger. They're thirsting for entertainment. They're thirsting for, oh, it was good. Uh, they're thirsting for, I don't know, lies and deception, they, they seek, seeking lies and deception, or seeking, I don't know what they're seeking on here. But those who made this far, the mark of the beast is going to be something that changes you, that allows you to open up yourself by permission to let the enemy of your soul in and, and stay in. And not only that, it's going to change you. See, he's going to put his spirit in you permanently. You're going to be his, and you're going to belong to this beast. You, this is the reason why it says that when Christ returned, Hamashiach returned, he's going to sh give a loud shout. And all those that hear them, hear his voice, the other ones, not the ones that get changed and caught up in the air, when they hear his voice, they're going to drop warring with one another. They're going to drop everything and they're going to come and fight against Hamashiach instantly. Why? Even though they're going to have fear in their hearts. It says that they're going to have fear in their hearts, but they're still going to come to battle him. Why? Because their spirit belongs to who? Satan now. 
and Satan is going to will them to come to try and defeat Hamashiach. And Hamashiach is going to put a hurt on them with us 144,000 supermen, indestructible new bodies, including with the holy angels. And the holy angels are going to mop up all these fallen angels and evil spirits and lock them away in the pit. Understand? And then we will be gathered by Hamashiach, brought back into the land, the remnant, all the remnant of the 12 tribes going to be gathered at that time, according to scripture, and then be brought back to the land, and then there will be peace in the land and the surrounding countries. But you don't see that with today's Israelis and Jewish. Wish I was a Jew people in our land who are uh, fake Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews who are of Esau's descent. Probably about what they said about 2% is Sephardic Jews. Now these are the real actual Esau Edomites that actually converted back in the day and they've been practicing and following these ways for a long 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 time and some way in the future they caught up with that nation of people and they they were they were they became the head over that nation and they decided that they wanted to follow they wanted their nation to follow the Sephardic or um, you can say the Sephardic Jewish ways that their forefathers learned and that's where you get the kingdom of Khazaria. And once they was defeated, they spread out into all Europe and took over Europe over time. And this is how you got Edomites all over Europe into Japheth's lineage, even lighten up their lineage because they was originally more of a light brownish color of a people. So the original Greeks and Russians and Medes and they were all like a tannish type people. From brown to light, light, light skin. You know, they was not white, you know, like people think. It wasn't until Esau's lineage came into the over there. And just as Esau went everywhere and lightened up every, every race of people, including our own Zion, uh, he also lightened up. Japheth's lineage over hundreds of years, thousands of years actually. If you look into the book of Jasher, uh, you will see when he, he started migrating and ruling over the Greeks and um, the original Chittim. And eventually they became Chittim. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this history, but it's in there, it's in the scripts. And this is how you got a lot of Edomites all over Japheth, all over Europe, and all over the world, reigning and ruling, using Japheth as a platform. Because see, Japheth's tents was promised. He was promised to uh, have his tents enlarged. Go look at Japheth's promise. He was promised to have his tents enlarged. And how did that happen? Esau enlarged his tents took over and started reigning the ruler over him and they became one nation of people and that's how you got Esau conquering the war the world and the rider on the white horse that's rode out to conquer and to conquer he was given a great sword to do this. Go look at his uh, promises in Genesis chapter twenty seven. So he was given a great sword to conquer everyone and his number one goal was to make sure you didn't understand none of this and to come to them as the saviors of the world and actually they're the destroyers of the world the whole world and we got some of Japheth's lineage fighting against him because the final kingdom was said to be partly broken I mean partly strong and partly broken 
So within their nation, the European world dominance, colonization of the world, you have Jafet's lineage still fighting against Esau. They've always been fighting against Esau, but Esau's been dominant. And there's been a lot of sellout Japhethites that wants to go with him. You know what I'm saying? So there's another story to everything. It ain't just looking at all Europeans as being evil, wicked, and dead to the truth. That's not what I've been saying here. I've always said that those individuals out of those nations will be the ones that will come out and, and, and attach themselves to the truth. But not the nation as a whole. That's what the Most High has always said. The, those other nations as a whole, he never knew them. He never dealt with them as a whole. He has never, they've been as spittle to him as a whole. But the individuals is the, is the individuals that wake up and realize, hey, the real Hamashiach and the real Almighty Creator is with them. I'm going with them. These are the Gentiles I talk about on this channel. Because you see, Hamashiach said, I pray not for the world, but I pray for those whom you gave me. Who was given to Hamashiach? The house of Yashara. And who has been a part of the house of Yashara? Always. Mix them all to the Gentiles. Y'all get it now? A lot of people not going to get it because they didn't come this far. But I want to, I'm going to keep pushing what I know because this is the final end result that I'm trying to get across to y'all. The final end result of the gospel, the good news, the real good news, not that churchianity good news that they've been putting out there, but the real biblical final result of your faith would be one in the spiritual man and woman recognizing your body is the temple of the Most High. The, the kingdom of heaven is inside of you and you must treat your body like the Levites did the holy temple back then. If Unless your, your righteousness to see the righteousness of the Pharisees and Sadducees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the final secret. That is not a secret. <laughs> Hallelujah. All praises to the Most High. I give him all glory and honor for all this knowledge and wisdom he has poured upon me to share with the very few because I'm not after for I'm not here to get thousands and thousands of views and it would be nice to get the word out there like that but my heart has changed and I realize that the very few is the ones that I'm looking for I'm not out for mega two three three thousand one one million views no I'm after the quality believers that hear what I'm saying here and that want to learn more. They want to learn how to get to this point. And I'm going to be putting that information out as long as I live. And as long as uh, Hamashiach has not come, has not returned. And as long as the internet exists. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So the most has, has indeed increased me since I left which I did do some fasting and praying and uh, get some of my finances in order. Not all the way. I'm still working on starting my home-based business and getting a working home telephone job. But I have to get my typing skills up. Because, you know, when you get a working home job you and you're listening to clients, you can't be looking at the keyboard trying to type. You gotta be just typing it. And I'm like, oh man, I'm so far behind on typing like, you know, so I'm studying getting my typing skills up so that if, let's say if uh, my home based business doesn't kick off like I really wanted to, I will at least still be able to work at home and still be able to do these videos like I truly want to. And um, pray that the Most High, y'all pray with me as well, that the Most High opens up that door 
to a home-based business that will indeed bring in enough to where uh, I won't have to go out there or be on some somebody's telephone service, um, telephone company and being bogged down for 10, 12 hours a day answering phone calls where I could be on here teaching. And that's my real heart's goal right there. And I'm letting y'all know who stuck it out this far. That's my real heart's goal is to do this full time. And so I'm looking, I'm, I'm working this other business. I'm learning it. I'm building a website. I'm <clears throat> just to start advertising it as well. And y'all just pray for me with my success in that. Because what happens over the next couple of months is going to define how much I'm going to be on here helping you. And if you got any questions, feel free to hit me up at truesaver at gmail.com, T-R-U-S-A-V-E-R at gmail.com. It's in the description box as well. All you do is copy, I mean, uh, yeah, copy and paste. And send me uh, any questions or comments or things that are personal that you need help with. Feel free. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Oh, and also another thing. Put some of these videos in your favorites. Uh, download them to your uh, laptop computer. And go over these things that you hear. hearing. And don't worry if you don't understand just yet. With time and patience, you will get it. You will, you will figure out the final result of the gospel. You will figure out the actual gospel itself that was preached and taught. The actual. And you will come, come under the same knowledge and the wisdom and understanding that I have come under. Because it's the same spirit that's leading me, that is leading you out there to these truths that has been purposely misspoken, misguided, and put away so that you can stay on the broad path to hell or lake of fire. So with that, I'm going to say shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm out.